Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, one thing about having the uh, messages put on the, uh, the website is that it also tells you how long they were. <laughs> well, I have to blame Peter, Paul, and Mary for last week. It was like 17 minutes or so. Um, so I thought I'd give you a break this week. Uh, but before I begin, if you haven't seen, not, well, I hope you've seen the message if you weren't here last week. But if you haven't seen um, a video of the song that Joanne and I did, uh, that Glenn put together, look at it. We have a wonderful, talented fellow who, who takes pastors and makes them look good. <laughs> And uh, he did a wonderful job with this, uh, with this song that Joanne and I did by creating a, a, a music video. Uh, and it, it's very inspiring. You can get it either on YouTube or through our, uh, our website. But it, it is, it's, it's only three minutes. <laughs> but it's, it's worth a, a trip to the website or to YouTube to see it. He does a marvelous job with, with the video. Such a talent. No. Well, this morning I want to begin with a, a short video clip. It's a, it's a commercial that's airing these days. And so, Tom, if you'll hit the next slide. There's a moment when you push past walls and limits, panting, sweating smiling and you realize you've just pushed past what you ever thought possible independence blue cross live fearless live fearless because you have insurance coverage Go out and stop a car in the middle of the road because you have insurance coverage. You know, insurance only kicks in after the fact. After you've been injured or you've been hurt or you have in some way been incapacitated, then insurance comes into play. And not even those who saw the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, on the mountain after his resurrection, were able to live fearless. They worshiped him, but some doubted. And what more could God do to dispel the doubts and fears than to raise God's Son from the dead, to show that death has been defeated? And yet the disciples of Jesus who saw him could not live fearless. And neither can we live fearless, that is. Because fear and doubt are part of our lives. You know, I was talking to one of our members last week after worship, and somehow or another, the topic of snakes came up. And I have absolutely no room in my life for snakes. They just send chills up my spine, even little garter snakes. And I'll share a confession. I, I have on occasion gone after one of those things that crawl on the ground with a lawnmower. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, Jesus' disciples may not have had issues with snakes. And maybe they did, who knows. But they did have an issue with the call of Jesus to be missionaries to the Word of God. And while Jesus calls them to be people on the move in mission, in order for that to happen, the disciples also must be rooted in the story and the land of their own beginnings. The world that we know 
is where we have received God's story. Maybe it came through our parents or our grandparents, or maybe by someone taking us to Sunday church school or us finding a church school on our own and walking there. Maybe through pastors. But in some way, the story of Christ, resurrected and living in the world through the Holy Spirit, came to us in this world. And as a result, we are gathered here to worship Him. And then there is the other world, the one that we are on the road to, the one that asks us what we believe and why, the one that questions whether or not we are being truthful to that story we received in the land of our beginnings, the one that causes us to question whether or not we are really living fearless, or if that's even possible. You know, the Greek word for doubt that is used here in Matthew is just used here in this instance and also in the account of Peter seeking to join Jesus in his walk on the sea. And it carries the sense of standing in two places at the same time or a being of two different minds, kind of straddling, if you would. And for Peter, that meant he wanted to be with Jesus out on the water as Jesus walked out there. That's the one foot. But the other foot was back here that said, you know what? People don't walk on water. They sink. And for the disciples in the post-resurrection experience with Jesus on the mountain that Matthew has, today's gospel, the one foot said, this is the master, the one we have followed. The one who taught us about the love of God. The one who promised to be with us. And yet the other foot was saying, the reality of life is that people who die remain dead. How can this be? So Jesus commissions people who are not perfect, who don't live fearless, to be his disciples. He calls people who both worship and who question. As they stand on the edge of the world that was and on the beginning of the world that will be, is coming to them in faith. Jesus saying that all authority has been given to him is the thread that mends the gap between heaven and earth that was created in creation by sin. But there is no this life and the next life. For the life after is now. It began in our baptism and we, too, straddle the real and the promised. We stand with one foot in the familiar and the other foot in the now what? As we are called by Christ to go, make disciples, teaching them what we have been taught. Live fearless is not a possibility, whether you are covered by independent Blue Cross or not. But live the gospel is quite possible because it takes into account our history while inviting us into a future. Even if, it's, even if each step we take includes fear and doubt. God gives us the courage and the strength to enter our future made secure by Jesus. 
That is our insurance policy paid for us by the grace of God. Fearless is not a prerequisite to be covered under it. Amen.